In this video, I'm cooking my buddy Ethan a surprise lunch, but there's a catch. I can only cook what I can trap. And to make it interesting, I'm gonna be trapping three different kinds of animals. One, some kind of prey. Two, some kind of predator. And three, some kind of water animal. And to get started, we're going after some rabbits. To catch these rabbits, we're gonna be using this homemade rabbit trap and baiting it up with an apple. Let me show you how it works. So when you lift up on this door, you have this right here, which is a trigger and has a little bent piece right here. You put the trigger down in this hole, put the little lip on it, right catching on the edge of the trap. Then whenever the animal moves through the trap, he's gonna bump the trigger, door's gonna shut, it locks, he can't get out. He's trapped until I come the next day to get him out. There's some of our apples opening the trap. And the rest of rabbit trapping is pretty simple. Just go to some places where you see a lot of rabbits and set the traps out, and then it's just a waiting game. I see rabbits right in here all the time. So I'm just gonna nestle it in the ground, set this trap, and literally, we're good to go. The key to any kind of trapping, though, is to set multiple traps. That way, you increase your odds exponentially. And now we're moving on to squirrel trapping. To trap these squirrels, we're gonna be using a 110 conibear baited up with peanut butter crackers. A 110 conibear is a kill trap, meaning it kills your animal instantly. The way it works is that squeeze these springs down, open the trap, this is the trigger, this is the dog, Set it somewhere just like that. Now, whatever moves through the trap and touches this trigger, it goes off and kills. Ooh, not doing that, I'm not that crazy. Like this stick, squirrel goes through, hits the thing, claps down right on his head. He dies instantly. And we're gonna be setting this up in a tree so it really eliminates the possibility of any non-target catch getting into the trap. This is pretty much a squirrel only set, maybe a pause. But the key to trapping, no matter the species, is to set your traps where the animal is. And that means looking for signs. I actually come to this tree right here because if you look up there, you can see a hole. And that's a good chance there's squirrels actually living in this tree. Not only that, but you can also look on the tree and see where things have been peeled off and pecked off and scratched here and there. That's a good sign that squirrels are climbing this tree often. So this should be a perfect place to set a squirrel trap. At least I'm stronger than a squirrel. I'd be had right there. And just like any other traps, the key to this is to set more than one. The more traps you got out, the more chance you got of catching some. For the predator, I'm going to a location that has all three of the Kentucky predators. Bobcats, fox, and coyotes. To catch a predator, I'm going with a super basic set called a dirt hole set. It's the one I use pretty much 90% of the time and catches me 90% of the animals. You essentially bury the trap just under the dirt and put a dirt hole with some bait in it beside the trap. And whenever the predator comes to try to get the bait out, Hopefully he steps in the trap and gets caught until I get there. Now that the squirrel, rabbit, and predator traps have been set, we're moving on to something I've not trapped in my entire life. We're going muskrat trapping. All right guys, I'm out here with Easton. We're doing some water trapping. Yep. And he knows how to trap a muskrat. I kind of know how to trap a beaver. We got a pond that's got muskrats, a river that's got beavers. We're gonna try to get both. One thing about water trapping, you gotta have waders. You don't have to, but. Preferred. Preferred. He's got good waders. I got Amazon's cheapest waders, so at least I make them look good. That's all I can say. This is what we're using to catch these muskrat traps. Yeah. It's called a caught bear. Uh huh. It's like a beaver trap, except obviously a lot smaller, and it only has one spring. But it's set the same way, and that's about it. It's just basically a miniature beaver trap. What are we looking for for where to set a muskrat trap? We're looking for a fresh hole, like where a muskrat could have burrowed up in the bank, mm -hmm. and. If you look right here, this, okay. this looks like an old hole, see? You can tell because it's like got leaves in it. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's pretty old. Yeah. So we're gonna not put a trap there because it doesn't look like there's nothing using it. But that used to be one? Yeah, that did used to be one. Looking at the bank, looking at the bank. Did you say you seen one right over here that looked pretty yeah, good? This looks pretty fresh. Oh, oh I see yeah. it. See, it looks like it's been dug up. Yeah, and recently. there's like fresh dirt out there yeah, it's, where it's been kicked up, yeah. I guess. On top of the grass too, because there's a little grass line. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is how you set it. Like I said, same way as you would a beaver trap. It's meant to be put like that, yeah. but I like to put it like that. Really? So you come in here, stick it, 
straight up and down like that. Yeah. Put it where it's covering most of your hole. Yeah. And then find a good spot. And then you stick it down, down in there. So essentially you're just like setting that trap and putting it right in front of the hole and it's just gonna clap them when they come out. Yeah. Well, there we go. Muskrat trap set. Yep. Two more. Got a few more holes right here. We're gonna set two more. Then we're setting the beaver traps. All right, guys, this is the trap we're gonna be using for beavers. It's pretty much exactly the same as the muskrat trap, except probably about 10 times bigger. You just wanna set it where a beaver's already going. And all he has to do, no bait, no anything, all he has to do is travel his routes that you have this thing set on and he's gonna get clapped. Now, the most important thing with these things is setting in the right spot. So we're gonna go down this riverbank we're gonna look for those beaver slides. Right down there, you can actually see we got some beaver tracks. Pretty sure those are beaver tracks. They're a lot bigger than a raccoon would be, but there's no slide around here. This is a really good sign though, because there is tracks right there and they seem decently fresh. Also, I wanna say we're not professional beaver trappers. So just keep that in mind. This location's looking pretty promising. Not only are we right beside a cornfield, which beavers love to eat. You can kind of see a war out trail right there. And you can definitely see a war out trail right here. So we'll follow this and we'll see where it goes. It comes right down here. Funnels into a slide. This is exactly what we're looking for. Literally like a, like a slide, like at the water park, but for beavers. But yeah, this right here is actually exactly what we want. You can even see toenail prints and beaver tracks. That's what we want. We're gonna take the 330, which is the big trap, go right down there, we're gonna set it. Update, now we have an Easton slide right there. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't see it, but I assume you fell. Yeah. Okay, about to have a Kindle slide right here. I'm gonna try to get down here without sliding in the river myself. Now with 330s, I'm pretty sure in every state, I don't actually know this for sure, but in most states for sure, they have to at least be touching water. Some states they have to be fully submerged, but here they just have to be touching the water. Oh, I got on. I'm in the water. Going in right there. Actually, it's going in right here. Okay, it's in the water, it's in the path. I'm gonna grab a few sticks out here, just kind of guide them. Just like this one right here, so it should be really good. Stick right down in there. That should stop them from coming around this way. Stick a stick right here, or two or three. And then just in case, since my trap is submerged, I'm gonna put this little floating limb across the top so that they dive down instead of swimming over top of it. We'll see. I got another conibear, we'll probably set it somewhere down there, but we'll see. I'd give it a, I'd give it a 20% chance of catching something, but that's why you set multiple traps. It's 20 plus 20, 80. Uh-oh, boys, we got him. A day one catch. I will say this, I was not expecting that. And looks like we got us a nice red fox. What you thinking? Fox. You'll eat good, huh? Yeah, I cook right up. Now, we're not gonna mess with this fox too much. We're not gonna stress him out, but we do wanna get close enough to see him, right, you know, before we- We won't get close enough to smell him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got another trap right here. Hold up, check this out. This is the other trap that I set. Because whenever I set predator traps, I like to set two, because usually if it's good enough for one, it's good enough for two. It looks like he was here at this one first and dug a little bit out, but that's fine. Oh, I can smell him. I can't tell he's getting ready to say he must have peed on himself. He's marking his territory on every log around here. He looks like a Jimmy. That's Jimmy the Fox. Anyways, we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna take him out. When I go to dispatch, I use a 22. There's two spots to shoot him. Either one in the brain, two in the heart and lungs. Both are super quick. Here we go. Good night. And that's, it's over. Well, there we go. We just knocked off the predator in the first night. Nothing in the rabbit traps, nothing in the squirrel traps. We caught a fox. Now let's go check the muskrat traps. Can muskrats we get a swim, right? Yeah, muskrats are water. Like, like little otter. water rats. First trap, and I think we got one. You want me to get in there and get him? Yeah. I got the waders on. Yeah. Dude, let's go. We caught a stinking muskrat. It looks like a big one. I've never caught a muskrat before. This is my first time even... Maybe even seeing one. It's not. Like it's a big beaver looking thing. Let's yeah. See. Right on his neck. Heck yeah. There he is. Well, there's our water animal. Dude, that's sweet. Pop him out. Let's go. Ow. There we go. Look at that, a muskrat. 
That is cool. This is our first check. Let's check these other ones. I think we set what? Three or four? Three. So far, so good. We'll take it. And we'll reset that one probably here in a minute. What are you thinking? Uh, first trap, we got already got a catch. Yeah, we'll see what these other two hold. Yeah, and the beaver traps. Can't yeah. forget about those. We got on this and anything? Uh, no traps in touch. Yeah, but as for the last muskrat set, it was right there. I, I, don't, uh, see I don't see nothing either. I think he's still good. Well, let's go check the beaver traps. And uh, looks like we may be eating a muskrat. Have you ever eaten a muskrat? No. All right, I'll tell you how it goes. <laughs> First trap. Ain't been touched. On to the next one. Update, we hit a rock. Yeah. I think we broke some. Uh-oh. What we got? Uh-oh. Oh, oh aren't, gosh. That ain't supposed to be, ain't supposed to be doing that. I can just pull that out right there. What is that called? Axle. Oh, that's probably not good then, is it? No, it means that we've only got three wheel drive. That ain't that bad. Beaver trap number two has not been touched. And I'll look down there at beaver trap number three, and it has also not been touched. That's okay though. We did get a muskrat, and we will eat it. I'll be honest, guys. I don't even know how to skin a muskrat. You can see why people want them though. That fur right there, how fuzzy that is. And build coats out of that and stuff. Wear them in Russia, I guess. I'm gonna skin that thing. Uh-oh, boys, the door is down. Now, on traps like this, when the door's down, that means one of two possibilities. Number one, we caught something. Number two, misfire. It's literally one of those two. All right, to check this out, I'm gonna look through the top two holes and see if I can see anything. All right, do y'all see anything? I can see the apple right there. All right, let me look this way a little bit. Let me try this other hole. Sending y'all in, here we go. Hmm. I think I'm seeing pieces of the apple. I'm not seeing anything, but I don't want to be mistaken. I'm gonna lift this thing up and see if anything's in. Open it up slowly, just. Oh gosh, did you see that? Did you see that? Something just tried to get out of here. Oh, there it is, there it is, there it is. There's its fur, baby. I don't think this is a rabbit. I think we actually caught a squirrel. And this is kind of crazy because this is the first squirrel I've ever caught and I wasn't even trying to catch a squirrel. So this is pretty epic. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna barely crack it. I'm sliding y'all in. Let's see if we can see what this is. Oh gosh. Oh, it is a squirrel. That's 100% a squirrel, baby. Let's go, baby. We got a squirrel. Not only am I surprised because I just caught my first squirrel ever and I've been trying for like eight years, but I'm also surprised that this entire challenge only took two days. I was not expecting that at all. But hey, we did it. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take this squirrel, slice and dice, and we're gonna catch you guys in the kitchen. We are gonna be eating good today. Now to cook Ethan's lunch, we're going with three separate dishes, starting off with some barbecue squirrel. We tried this recipe a few videos ago and I believe I overcooked it. So this time we're trying it again. And to be honest, we're just gonna hope for the best. The next recipe is gonna be fox fried rice. All right, for this recipe, we're just going to keep it between me and you. So I went out to the Dollar General and I bought this chicken fried rice. And we're just going to take the chicken out of it and put some fox in it. You feel me? Don't nobody tell Ethan about this, okay? He's not supposed to know. The procedure was pretty simple. I just fried up some fox meat, put it in the container with the fried rice, and then microwaved it just as it said to do. And now we're moving on to the third one. I was gonna do muskrat meatballs, but then I realized, oh yeah, I don't actually know how to make meatballs. So instead we're doing spaghetti with muskrat sauce. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, Ethan. This is the best I could do. I'm gonna cook up this muskrat meat sauce the same exact way I would with any other kind of meat sauce. Now that everything's ready, let's pack it up, make sure our presentation is nice, and let's take this junk to Ethan and see if he eats it. What's up? What's going on, man? What's going on? 
lunch tray. I got you lunch, Ethan. Here to see what you think about it. What? It's well done right there. That's nice. Look at all that. It Oops, nice. looks like the squirrel shifted a little bit in travel. <laughs> this is. I don't think that's a squirrel. What's this? That's also a squirrel. All right, got a little, got a little taste sampler. That'll be called a squirrel. Something. How's that? Huh? It's killer. Really? Mm -hmm. Like killer is in like kill it's you or good. what? I mean, probably, but it's good. Is it actually good? Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. Air fryer. Really? Yeah, air fryer squirrel. Was that shot? Mm-hmm. This is the first thing you made that actually is edible. Oh, just wait until you hit the rest of the plate, man. What's that? Next, we have fox fried rice. This is fox. Yeah. Well, that's fox. Soy sauce? Yeah. Did you... <laughs> was that... Where did you... Where did you... Where did you bring that from? <laughs> Behind the desk. All right, fox fried rice. Here we go. Okay. Huh? I mean, I'll take it. I'll take it. It's pretty good. Really? Uh -huh. So I'm two for two on the edible category. Uh -huh. Next. The spaghetti. It was going to be spaghetti with muskrat meatballs, but I don't know how to make meatballs. So now it's just I'm muskrat it, meat sauce. This is muskrat meat sauce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gourmet. Gourmet. <laughs> it tastes no different than regular meat sauce. You came a long way in cooking. How was it? I 10. Eight. That's a pretty big deal. Yeah.